In the world of anime, there are seemingly two ways to deal with intense trauma. Either become a head-hanging, eye-covering, black-clad, my chemical romance blaring icon of angst, or swing the exact opposite way into violent, bombastic degeneracy. Equipping the answer to every problem with one brain cell, two bloody fists, and a Colgate smile. Or there's the unifying third option of becoming a straight-up monster and murdering everything in your path. What would happen if our favorite emo king of darkness, Ken Kaneki, were to fight our favorite simping mega chad, Denji, who, until just now, I realize doesn't have a last name? Does it matter? Is it close? Is it bloody? Maybe, maybe, and definitely yes. So let's get into it. Disclaimer, this video contains spoilers for the entirety of both Chainsaw Man and Tokyo Ghoul. You've been warned. The separate universes of Tokyo Ghoul and Chainsaw Man aren't really all that separate. So what kind of heat is each side bringing to the fight? Let's review. Where do we start with our Lord of Edgelords? Kaneki goes through many phases of metamorphosis in this show, both physically and emotionally, switching up personalities almost as fast as he does his weapons of choice. Starting off as a quiet, shy, black-haired teenager with a book in one hand and crippling introversion in the other. So, your standard literature major. He then becomes the stone-cold, pain-hardened, somewhat feral scourge of the night with a hair dye job. So, also your standard lit major. And his final form, of course, is a mix of the two, becoming a stone-cold, quiet, smartly-dressed professional with a stable career. So, your standard literature major's dream. As a half-ghoul, Kaneki possesses some neat little ghoul prerequisites. Superhuman strength, speed, endurance, regeneration, and resistance are all part of the basic package. And somewhat contrary to what you think, as a half-ghoul, instead of having a lower degree of strength, all these traits are dialed up to 11. But Kaneki's main fighting force comes from the ghoul's natural weapon system, the Kagane. Kaganes can manifest in different shapes and forms. Swords, spears, projectiles, or in Kaneki's case, literal hell. But that comes later. Kaneki's initial Kagane consists of tentacle-like appendages that move with terrifying speed and strength, easily able to demolish hardened concrete and cement. As his second personality, Heisei Sasaki, Kaneki is able to much more expertly manipulate his Kagane, fashioning them into various new shapes like arms, cages, etc. He also learns how to use a Quinx, which is basically a ghoul-killing sword, and he uses it scarily well. He also sharpens his hand-to-hand -hand combat skills, combining training and self-teaching to become an expert in various styles of martial arts, which he combines with his Kagane for extra oomph. All in all, Kaneki has a pretty decked out arsenal to enter this fight, which leads us to our second contender. Where else do we need to elaborate? It's a man, it's a chainsaw, it's a chainsaw man. The system that governs Denji's power is as simple as the man himself. After fusing with his pet demon Pochta, Denji inherited abilities of his plushy looking dog friend to become a fiend or a devil human hybrid. In this state, Denji also has the super powered standard bundle of super strength, speed, endurance and regeneration, just a scratch lower than Kaneki based on the feats displayed. And of course, his fighting style contains all the slashing, crashing, gore, and blood spurt of a chainsaw massacre, plowing through enemies with the chainsaws on his arms, head, and occasionally legs. Denji, whilst being a bit spacey at times, isn't exactly stupid. He's shown to be resourceful and tactical, albeit in his own aloof, impulsive way, even being able to replicate moves shown by stronger opponents, like Katana Man's perfect cut. The limits of a weapon as basic as a chainsaw continue to be astoundingly vague, as Denji continues to find increasingly unhinged ways to utilize his revved up chain blades, such as chain whips. Overall, creativity may not be Denji's strongest trait, but it certainly isn't lacking. The man has game, and above all, has almost zero fear in flaunting that game. So, the stage is set. But there's one common thread that connects these two characters fairly closely. Both of these characters are powerful in their own right, but their ace is the fact that their strength grows exponentially from the same thing, blood. If introduced to an endless supply of ghoul, human, or devil blood, the One-Eyed King and Chainsaw Man become, as Denji calls it, perpetual motion machines, endlessly regenerating and reviving their strength to come back for more. Which is why, for this battle, 
let's give them both their edge and place both Denji and Kaneki in a location that perfectly complements this condition. A bustling Tokyo, crowded full with devils, ghouls, and people. An absolute RBC buffet for Kaneki and Denji to bid for their peak performances. This entire place is about to turn into a massacre. We're going to start off our combatants at roughly the peak of their base strengths. For Kaneki, that would be around the point where his alter ego, Heisei Sasaki, begins to regain his memories. With his array of skills, experience, and tactical knowledge, he's already well equipped to start the bloodshed. And for Denji, it's roughly himself at the end of the Santa Claus fight, meaning he has his basic combat training and access to the chainsaw devil arsenal as far as his imagination can stretch for now. Having the two opponents at base strength means we won't dip into their final forms, such as full Chainsaw Devil for Denji and Dragon Kakuja for Kaneki, because a fight between those two would have been a whole other video on their own. For the first leg of the fight, it's Chainsaw versus Quinks and Kagane. Denji rips the cord and out comes the roar of grinding gears as he boosts forward, chains detaching as he uses them to slingshot himself straight. Heisei, or for now let's call him Kaneki, begins to evade, deftly ducking, weaving, and blocking with his quinks, using his Kagane to move around. Speaking of movement, it is pretty interesting to realize that both Denji's and Kaneki's main weapons are organic extensions of their body, but this also means that there would likely be a certain level of reflex in the way they operate and move, like a natural defense system. For now, while the two opponents have tunnel vision, drawn to each other's bloodlust, means that any unfortunate creature that gets in their way becomes their own personal serving of minced meat. So with the addition of a few, ahem, <clears throat> road bumps, the two keep flitting around Tokyo. Kaneki keeps dodging and deflecting, but it wouldn't be easy, and he'll soon start racking up the cuts and slashes as Denji persists. With the obstacle course of skyscrapers and handy purchases, the environment gives Denji the slight mobility advantage, as he can Spider-Man to his devil heart's content from building to building. But this is a risk Kaneki takes, as he now purposefully lures a combination of innocent bystanders into Denji's path, using his own tentacles as well as Denji's flailing saws to turn Tokyo into a bloodbath. Devil, low-level ghoul, and human alike become reduced to a growing pool of red. Kaneki then promptly starts feeding on this as the two fight. His wounds heal, he starts getting stronger, and before Denji catches on, Kaneki activates his Kakuja, going on the offensive. Kaneki would have, in this time, analyzed Denji's fighting style and adjusted accordingly, catching Denji off guard, forcing him back. But that's not curtains just yet. Denji fights dirty, creatively, and unpredictably which would likely result in Kaneki sustaining a few serious injuries. Denji would also in this situation very likely discover some other hidden features of the Chainsaw Devil's abilities. Or maybe discover isn't the right word. He'll force his body to create some new toys for him to play with. He's not going to be outdone by some salt and pepper punk. Maybe he learns to extend the length of his chainsaws. Maybe he learns to split his single chainsaw chains into multiple chains. But in any case, this doesn't make things easy for Kaneki, who's most likely going to face a lot of collateral damage, maybe even losing a limb or two as well. Not that it means anything. The two brawl, both catching blood in the air to drive their power, none making any ground as they regenerate and continue. But Kaneki, less so, because of his Kakuja eating up most of the fuel. Finally, as both characters hit a sort of flow state and the battle nears the end game, Kaneki would start keeping his distance again throwing off Denji's momentum and using his Kagane mastery to goad out Denji's long-range chain moves. Denji, in this state of frenzy, obliges by shooting forward another volley of chains. And right when this happens, like lightning, Kaneki catches the chains mid-air, a calm suddenly settling around him. He bursts forward with a reserve of unexpected speed and strength. In this moment of paralysis, before Denji can register the situation and break out, the dramatic music stops as you hear a sickening crunch. Kaneki appears behind Denji, delivering a final slash across the kid's neck, catching his decapitated head before it touches the bloodstained ground and regenerates. A headless body hangs in space, suspended by spiked chains as a bloodstained figure wades through a crimson city, his centipede-like appendages slowly retracting. Winner, Kaneki. So, that was a lot. 
Both Denji and Kaneki are broken characters. Their arcs are about finding peace with their trauma rather than letting it run them over. So it's really just a matter of who breaks from that journey and unleashes their demons out first. But what do you think? Do you agree with the outcome? Do you think Kaneki's final Kakuja would go down that easily? Check out this video next!